Hello, I'm Fred Schneider, and you're tuned in to The Weekly Report, a look at news and insight related to programs and services provided by departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. Dennis Gagne, who viewers may recognize as the former host of this program, The Weekly Report, was recently honored by the Mayor and City Council for his years of service as the City Communications Officer. It, it, it is very obvious the quality of work that's being put out um, on Channel 2 right now, and that's because of, of your work and your leadership under very difficult um, circumstances. So we appreciate that, and we will be sorely missed. The thing that I would say is most important to share with folks who are not in this room is that there are a lot of wonderful people, including those in this room and those who are out scattered across the city who get up every morning and make an attempt as employees of this organization to make the city a little better each day. Uh, the folks that I worked with in the city communications office are a wonderful example of that. Uh, they're committed to doing the best they can with the resources they have and they're committed to supporting you and the goals and objectives that you establish for the organization and so I would encourage you to support them as they support you but um, I'd really would like to say thank you. It's, it's a very nice honor. Thank you. Recently, Dennis accepted a new career position at the University of Missouri, and all of us here at the City Communications Office wish him the very best. The City has announced the recipients of the Health Department's annual Grade A Food Excellence Award. This award is given to food service establishments that have continuously complied with the city's food code and other public health standards. To view a complete list of the food service establishments that receive this honor, visit kcmo.org health. And speaking of awards, Government Fleet Magazine recently recognized the city's alternative fuel vehicle program with a sustainability all-star award and a number 15 ranking among alternative fleets nationwide. The city uses more than 300 alternative fuel vehicles in its fleet, including 35 compressed natural gas buses at the airport, which by themselves save more than 330,000 gallons of diesel fuel annually. Now let's check in with some of our city departments for information and insight. Tuberculosis is a treatable and preventable respiratory illness that has been around for thousands of years. It still today kills between 2 and 3 million people worldwide every year, according to the World Health Organization. Though it used to be the leading cause of death in the United States, health officials have aggressively treated TB cases to stop the spread of the disease. Our health department is on the front line of the battle against tuberculosis. TB is spread by prolonged exposure in an enclosed area to someone who has the active disease, which means they have the symptoms, breathing in the air that they breathe, cough, sneeze, or sing out. You won't catch TB just because someone walked by you in a grocery store and coughed, or from someone who has the infection but not the active TB disease. Someone can be infected for months or even years before developing symptoms and becoming contagious. The best way to find out if you have TB is to get a skin test or other diagnostic test. Many employers actually have TB skin testing as part of their hiring process. All positive TB skin tests are reported to the health department's TB program, which will then contact the person to discuss possible sources of infection and treatment options. Because TB is relatively rare within the states and so common elsewhere, most cases involve people who have either traveled to or lived in a country where TB has not yet been controlled. When a case of active or suspect TB disease is discovered, the health department works with that person to test all close contacts to identify those who have been infected and assure that everyone with the disease or the infection gets the appropriate treatment and medication. A single case of active TB disease can have dozens to hundreds of close contacts. All services are free of charge for those involved in a TB investigation. The health department has had great success against tuberculosis. In 2010, there were only 14 cases of active TB disease diagnosed within the city, compared to 42 cases diagnosed in 2000. 
If you would like to be tested for tuberculosis, contact your physician. The Health Department's fee-for-service adult immunization clinic also offers TB skin testing for $20. For more information on tuberculosis or on the skin test, visit our website, www.kcmo.org health. Last September, the department was able to replace their 40-year-old helicopters with three new ones. Now that our pilots are trained and have some flight time under their belts, we thought it would be a good time to get their perspective on the new technological wonders. Sergeant Sean Cutberth. The new helicopters have a lot of capabilities that we did not have in the old ones. Uh, for example, we have an updated FLIR system. We now have a daytime and nighttime camera system that we did not have before. We have a microwave downlink system, which allows us to send live video to, say, a command post or uh, commanders at, at headquarters so they can actually see exactly what the pilots in the helicopter are, are seeing live, uh, which could be a huge advantage in tactical operations, uh, something we, we never have had before. Just uh, the fact that we have this improved FLIR system and uh, our night vision goggles has really enabled us to be able to see things uh, that basically turns nighttime into daytime for us at nighttime. Uh, in the past we'd have to put our old spotlight in the backyards and look for people and try and position the light just right to look in certain areas where we thought someone may have been hiding. This has been a, a tremendous learning curve for all of us. We, all the pilots here went to Mesa, Arizona for a week of transition training just to get familiar with the helicopters uh, with factory pilots. Then once we received the helicopters uh, on September 1st of last year, we actually shut down the unit and did nothing but flight training for approximately three to four weeks just to practice emergency procedures, uh, taking off, landing, and, and I'm just talking about flying the aircraft so far. After that, then we had to start all over and learn how to operate all our brand new equipment that we've never had before. How to use the FLIR system, the camera system. The, it's operated totally different. It's a newer generation, better technology, and it, it's not the same as uh, what we had previously. It's not operated the same. So we had to have vendors uh, from each one of those uh, respective um, products come and basically give us lessons on how to use the camera, how to switch it from daytime to nighttime, how to record, how to use the the actual FLIR system. Uh, we had people come in to show us how to use the new Technosonic radios that we have. We don't have a traditional police radio in the helicopter like we used to. We have a Technosonic radio which enables us to have a lot more agencies frequencies so that we can actually communicate with any agency in the area with this updated radio. That was a huge learning curve uh, just figuring out how to operate our radio to talk to uh, other police personnel. I know it was a big expense to the taxpayers but uh, with this new technology we should be able to do uh, so much more work that we weren't able to do in the past and I definitely see it uh, saving lives potentially. Not only do our pilots assist KCPD officers on the ground, but occasionally assist other area law enforcement agencies as well. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. Hi, my name is Jenny Cronister. I'm with Evenergy. I'm the Kansas City Race Coordinator. I'm working through the Departments of Parks and Rec and Public Works. What that means is that I'm going to be a one-stop shop for all permitting, um, community relations, and dealing with all of races in Kansas City, walks, runs, and bicycles. It's important to have a race coordinator position in Kansas City because there are so many different aspects of Kansas City. The neighborhoods, the community, the businesses that are impacted, um, the, the city departments, and 
my job is to go ahead and tie all of those together and make sure that we have the best communication possible between all of those so that there aren't issues with getting trapped in your neighborhood three weekends in a row or not get being able to get into your business or, or church three weeks in a row, things like that. Part of what I'll be doing is to coordinate the community so that their knowledge of the race of the route and their ingress and egress into their neighborhood can be more efficient and they'll know where they can go and how, how they can kind of get around on race morning. Um, also, we're going to develop a website um, with, with Parks and Eve Energy to um, allow race directors to um, apply for permits pay their fees, anything they need to do. Also, the, the community at large can go on and see a calendar that will show what races, what distance, what charities are, and all of that um, every week. So it's, it's gonna be more updated so everyone will be more informed on what's happening. Um, the last thing that I'm in charge of doing is just making Kansas City a really great place to race, making it easier for the race directors when there's only one person to come to, um, making it easier for communication in the city departments um, so that everyone knows what is happening, um, re resolve any conflicts that might be happening with routes, and to make sure that the routes aren't going to go by the same businesses and have the same impact every single week. Um, the ultimate goal here is we'd like runners to bring their tourism dollars to Kansas City and run our races. If you'd like to have a race, you can contact me at J-C-H-R-O-N-I-S-T-E-R -E at eventergy.com, E-V-E-N-E-R-G-Y.com. 816-588-27. Nine, For more information, please visit us at www.kcmo.org slash parks. Looking ahead, in observance of President's Day on Monday, February 18th, curbside trash and recycling collection will be delayed one day and city offices will be closed. Residents who usually have Monday collection will receive the service on Tuesday, February 19th. Residents who usually have Friday collection will receive it on Saturday, February 23rd. The city is hosting a series of two-hour public meetings to get input from residents on the submitted fiscal year 2013-14 budget. The final public meeting will take place on Saturday, February 23rd at 9 a.m at the KCPD South Patrol Division. To view the submitted budget, including line item detail, please visit data.kcmo.org. Once again, it's tax season, and Kansas City business owners must submit all business license renewals and payments to the city by February 28th to receive their 2013 business license. In addition, the employer's annual reconciliation of earnings tax withheld and all W-2 forms are also due February 28th. W-2 information can be submitted electronically at kcmo.org w2. Please note that all Kansas City, Missouri tax forms can be obtained on the city's website at kcmo.org tax. Questions may be directed to the Revenue Division at 816-513-1120. For more information about this or any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org, scroll to the bottom right-hand corner, and click on the Weekly Report for links. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Fred Schneider. Have a great week. <laughs>